Who heard? You. Why? We, what are you saying? We've been supposed to have our second break. Oh, we'll do a second break right now. Let me just introduce you to She's this. She's taking you to check her blood pressure. Oh, I know. I told her soon. So you see this? Who did not say nothing? I said that. Uh, I'm sorry. I thought I did. Who need that blood pressure? That's the SD segment. That's the SD segment elevation. Ladies, can you see this? Mm-hmm. That's the SD segment. You see how it comes up instead of a straight line? Mm-hmm. Right? And that means... That is referred to as an SD segment elevation. That's a sign of a heart attack right here. All right? Uh -huh. That's a sign of a heart attack right here. Now, should you see this, which is the reverse, it's going down, then it goes back up. That's SD segment depression. That's ischemia. So, technically speaking, what am I saying? What I'm saying is, in function, you have elevation. And if it's a depression, you have ischemia. Okay. So if it goes downwards, ischemia. If it goes upwards, infarction. And that's how you tell when a patient has a heart attack. Someone asked me in the other class, Dr. Chuka, the doctors can tell if you've ever had a heart attack. How the heck they do that? And I said, well, all you need to do is, all you need to know is they look for a Q8. They found a Q8. Because the ST segment goes up, and after the patient has the symptoms and goes, the symptom goes, it goes back to normal. So you miss it, you miss it. But if you've had a, a heart attack once, after uh, it takes about, I think, a few days, the Q wave comes up. Once the Q wave comes up, it usually lasts for years before it vanishes. Sometimes it doesn't. So the doctor sees you, he gives you, and you've had a heart attack before. Okay? Same with the stroke, too, right? A stroke. They can tell if you had a stroke. They will tell, but not with an EKG, obviously. They'll have to do an EKG. ECG, right. Remember, That's attached if to it's your brain. dead tissue, it don't function no more. So we're just going to see a part of your brain that does not flick. So that's the reason why your brain swells with blood? Now, the brain swelling is a totally different thing. What? Well, okay, so when you have a stroke... All right, so my auntie, she had several strokes, but the last stroke she had caused her brain to swell so much it. When the dead, when the cell dies, it swells. Okay, that's where the swelling comes from. So where is the parts hematoma the brain, from? When the parts, parts of your brain, two things can happen: either the part brain swells and it increases the pressure within the skull, mm -hmm. and that's not good, or you bleed into the into the brain. Into your brain. It doesn't even matter because if you bleed into that small cavity, the pressure increases to right. the same effect. That's no good either. Right. You, do, you don't no, want. Oh, baby. Okay, no, Dad. See, this is the problem. When things like this happen to family members, you take it, you mourn your family, and you wake up. It's a wake up call. Oh, that's a what, what did you just say? Oh, made it. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. You do not want for the the brain is it's kind of same similar with the heart though. It I mean, like a the, flash. the brain the brain you don't the brain has the brain isn't you see the brain isn't that's called right? Mm -hmm. The pressure. I don't know if you can understand this. And hopefully you will. You see, when it comes to stroke and heart attacks. In the south, you teach it. You see the screen right here? You have a brain in there, right? And if you increase the pressure inside this case, the brain, will, it will hurt the brain, right? And what happens is you have a case where the brain is pushed out through this hole, it downwards because of the pressure. A little, little, Look, you have to keep that pressure at a point. You try to increase the pressure within this ball, you will end up pushing the brain out, down this way, okay? The problem with that is, the Italians were very good at killing themselves, at killing people. Don't, don't talk about my people like that. Yeah. Are you Italian? <laughs> yes, my mother is Italian. Like, for real. They weren't like the gangsters on the street. They didn't know what they were well, doing. Well, we kind of are, but I mean. All right. You shoot people nine times and they still alive, rapping. Imagine. Well, the Italian mafia guys, 
one bullet. Yeah, he was done. It was good. And they knew all this thing. They were, they were clinical. They knew. The part of your brain that controls your breathing and your heartbeat is right here, this level. So when they put the gun right here and they pull the trigger, what have they done? They have cut off your breathing in your heart. Literally, you are dead before even the ground. They don't need to check your pulse mm -hmm. in that kind of situation. <laughs> All I have to do is make sure that the bullet was fired. Boom, you're gone. Right? They were very good at that, at the brain right here. It's that same region, that same part, is located right here. So that if the pressure in the skull increases and you push that part out here, you will, you will, you will, you will strangle the part that deals with the breathing and you die. Man. Okay, I have a question. All right, so I have this condition where I have extra spinal fluid that pushes into my brain. So it causes me to have really, really bad headaches. And the only way to relieve that pressure is for them to do a spinal tap. Thank you. Okay. So, I've had six, so far, six spinal taps. What I want to know is why does the pressure continue to increase even after they drain the fluid away? If you have something blocking. Because some, as you're making, you're meant to drain it. As you're making, you're meant to drain it. So, it's either you have something making it more, or you have something blocking the drainage. It's that simple. Okay, so the, with the fluid, spinal fluid pressure up into the brain. So is, is it is it pushing my brain up? That's what's causing me to have the If headache? you have any, oh, I forgot to ask him that one. It turns out to, if you have raised intracranial pressure, intracranium, intra, inside cranium pressure, you will have a headache. Oh, yeah. Okay? It, it, typically, they, you say headache, but when they start, when you start No, it's saying, a different kind of headache. Is there, headache is there when you wake up. Right. Sleep. Right. Oh, now, it, oh, now you've got my attention. What did you say? Did you say it's there when you wake up? Mm -hmm. God damn, when you sleep and wake up, that's the last time you need a, a headache comes up. So if you say it's there right in the morning when you wake up, you got your doctor's attention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you tell me it's been going on for like a month. What kind of headache goes on for like a month mm -hmm. right after you wake up from sleep? And that's how they found out because I had a headache literally for a month and a half. Like there it, we go. It I would know. have... I I had to go. It would I have... I would have intervals where the headache was so bad mm -hmm. that I would have blurry vision and oh, couldn't see. Oh, no, 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 no. Your symptoms are... Did they have to put you through an MRI? Your symptoms. Yeah. Your symptoms were classic. All right. Your symptoms were classic. Ooh, that was all right, it's like testing. And they tried everything because they thought it was just migraines. There's nothing to, no, it's not. If you come up to me, tell me your headache is worse in the morning, it's yeah. for a month. You got blurry vision. Uh -huh. I'm going to do a CT right there, right there, and then I'm going to figure it out. Right? Yeah, they did once I said, but I thought it was just my regular migraine. No, no, that but normal. that, for me to I have it for, a, and then at nighttime, it seemed like the pressure built up more because the doctor said that, when I'm using my eyes all day long, it's making more pressure. So I felt the headache mostly in my eyeballs. Like, it felt like my eyes were going to explode. And anything, if I took a pee, it would hurt. If I sneezed, it would be worse. Because it seemed like all the pressure. That's exactly what it is. All the pressure built up. You sneeze. And the only time sneeze. I feel better. <laughs> right. The only time I would feel better is if they do a spinal tap. Like, I wouldn't have a headache for a whole year. Mm -hmm. That's it. You see, the thing here is, you, well, get, 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 check this out. You ever wonder why they put people in a coma? In certain problems, they put them in a coma? Sometimes. You ever wonder what that's about? Mm -hmm. What's that about? They just put them to sleep. You see, <laughs> the vessels in the brain, the more you do, the more you do, the more blood flows to the brain, right? The less you do, the less blood. Can you imagine if you have a headache and we end up pumping more blood? You have a headache because of a raise of the cranial pressure, right? Then we we end up pumping more blood into your head. All right, uh, ladies, stay with me. Stay with me. Stay with me. Can you imagine? I, I just told you. I just told you that when your brain is hurt or damaged, it swells. Mm -hmm. It's still in the same cranium. So you know the intracranial pressure of increase, right? If that patient is conscious, he's going to tell you he has a major headache or she has a major headache, right? 
Then we look, oh my God. Intracranial pressure, the, the brain is swollen, right? The pressure in here is hot. We start thinking of ways to bring down the pressure. What do we do? If we put this man to sleep and we reduce the blood supply going in, oh, yeah. we're going to reduce the pressure of the vessel. The vessels will shrink. And if they shrink, it will help reduce the pressure. That's what I right. So we put them to sleep. Right. And That's we what start saying. treating That's what them mm -hmm. as the swelling subsides. We slowly bring them back. Okay, so. Oh, so you. Okay, so that's one of those. Like, sometimes they go into a coma, sometimes they induce the coma. Like just the So, how they take them out of the coma? Because I know, like. Anesthesia, just like you pick a lot of anesthesia. You will continuously give them drugs. It's not like you just shoot them up and they're in a coma for life. You will give them something and keep them asleep. Okay, so after you have the spinal tap, right? Now, this happens to me too. They didn't let me lie down for the whole 24 hours after mm -hmm. I had the spinal tap. Mm -hmm. Nobody told me that you're supposed to lie flat for 24 hours. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when I got up, I had the worst headache of my whole entire life. And they told me the only way to fix it was to do a blood patch. Was to take blood from my arm and put it in the hole that's in my spine because air trapped into it. They said it wasn't, the platelets didn't collect enough when you, when to you close the... spinal tap, they're meant to seal it. You're meant to lay in that hole. Right. Oh, wow. Right. And that's the reason because air got into it and went up my spine. Right, now, 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 um, let's do the EKG. Oh, yeah, but not as bad as I used to. Now, let's go back to this recap. SD segment <laughs> elevation is a sign of infarction, death. SD segment depression is a sign of ischemia. We can do something about it. Okay? But the main thing you need to know, you need to be able to calculate heart with the heart rate, okay? You need to know that the P wave is the atrium, QRS is the ventricle, okay? And the T wave is repolarization, returning back to normal, all right? You need to understand where to place your leads. So, what's tachycardia? Fast heartbeat. High, high heartbeat. What's high heart, heart rate? Like anything over 100. 100. Like I anything over 100. Every time they take my post, it's like 112, 106. It's never under 100. Well, it, it does. It, 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 it'll be. Mr. Mead, but... what's the normal heart rate? Ain't it, um, like, ain't it one, like 120? Normal heart rate. That's the blood pressure. You're talking about. No, I'm saying. 60 to 100. Real quick. Um. <laughs> but, I mean, but for a child, that's normal. Because the child, like a What's baby, heart rate is, is supposed to be high. What's high? When you're pregnant. You're right, but what is it though? Ain't it like. um? You brought it up. <laughs> it's over 120 though. Yeah, if you get high. It They'd be like 160. Yeah, 160. Yeah. Like, it'd be high. It, dep one, it depends uh, on your age, so you can't say normal heart. What's the normal? But the younger you are, the, the, the higher What's the normal heart rate for a newborn, Ms. Jania? You trying to flip me now? Well, well, but I'm saying, you say the normal heart rate. You ain't saying for an adult because it varies your age. Newborn baby. Normal heart rate. A newborn baby, one day whole. It, isn't it? It could be up to 160. It's like 170. 140, 140, 160. 140. I got it. Something like that. I remember my stuff. All right. And then as you get older, <laughs> as you get older, your brain <laughs> but, he, goes down. but it is, if it depends on your age. For a normal heart rate. You know, you can't just you're say, right. like, Once you get right. older, it slows down. Yeah. Now, 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 one last thing. So if you count and you do the calculation and it's more than 100, the patient has an increased heart rate. What's that called? Tachycardia. Um, Tachycardia. Tachycardia. What if you do it and it's less than 60? Bradycardia. Bradycardia. Now, you can also find out, determine if the problem is coming from I mean the EKG. above here or below okay. here. How can you do that? If you have a tachycardia, for instance, a fast heart rate, and you check the QRS width and it's more than three squares, in other words, it's, it's big, then the problem is coming from the ventricles, the lower part. Now, if you check and the QRS is not as much as three squares, it's smaller than three squares, it's really thin, 
The problem is coming from the upper part. Uh, that's all you need to know. Take 10. Take 10. Take 10. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's oh. 7.30. We didn't do the capital. We can do it now.